Hey, what a shock, it's windy. Um, so I'm over by the relatively close to the Randall Davy Audubon Center. I got about 15 minutes to kill here before I have another meeting. And uh, there's a municipal water body of water here that's owned by the municipal portion of the Santa Fe city government. So this is potentially where some of the drinking water comes from. And it's weird for me because I see a body of water like this and my first thought is, where would I put the blind? Where would I set my decoys? How would I call the waterfowl in here so that I could absolutely just blow the living crap out of them with my 12 gauge or 20 gauge or 16 or even, even my 410? I've done plenty of bird hunting with a 410. I actually prefer shooting birds with a 410. I know that shooting birds and birding seem counterintuitive, but I never said I was a role model. So uh, I haven't done any bird hunting in a long time. I don't have any intention of doing anytime soon, only because I just don't really have many friends at this point in my life who are into the uh, into the bird hunting thing. I would, because I love... They're tasty. That's the thing that birders have to come to grips with, is that birds are... Depending on the bird. I don't eat crows. I don't eat sparrows, that kind of thing. But when you're talking about dove and quail in particular, whew, put those in a smoker all day long. Clean them. Put a jalapeno under the breast, put it in a smoker for six or eight hours, ten hours. It's tasty. That's a problem. I'm conflicted. For those of you city folks out here, let me give you a little uh, natural history, natural world lesson here. You see this territory? You see these open trails like this with rocky, rocky land? You've got this low scrub brush and you've got open areas like this. You've also got some sage, you've got some brush, you've got tons of birds, so you got food source. This is really solid rattlesnake country. Now we're at about 7,000 feet, which is getting up into the high range for rattlesnakes, even though I have seen them at much higher than 7,000 feet. It's, um, it doesn't happen all that often, but this is prime snake country, man. They love this territory that's a little bit open with rocky protection, food sources. There's a water source down here. So I told my wife when we got here, gots to keep an eye out for Mr. No Shoulders. I know why people come. I know why we get the leaf peepers. It's because of this. The whole valley is turning yellow orange right now and it is beautiful. But the fact is for me, it signifies more than anything else, the end of the tourist season, which at this point in time, is the greatest thing ever. Anything that helps us rid our, our community of the scourge that is modern tourism. I'm only half joking. I know that tourism is a big part of the economy here, and it has been for a long time, and it will be for well, the future. But as a, uh, someone who lives in a tourist town, you know what I'm talking about. The modern tourists are, yeah, I, I don't know, sketchy. So you see this brush that I'm walking through? Anytime I get near a water source where you're walking through this tall timber, this tall brush, not timber, this tall brush reminds me of two things. One, bear territory. Bears love this kind of area and they're ex incredibly difficult to see in spaces like this. So you gotta keep your eyes open. This place gets a lot of traffic so I'm not worried about seeing a bear here today. But two, it always reminds me of fly fishing as a kid in Wyoming because anytime you get near a water source, you always had brush like this that was up above your head and you had to sort of navigate through it to get to where you were ending up fishing. So I love being in these spaces like this. It reminds me of childhood. I have run from a bear in a situation like this. I actually ran from a bear with my parents. That's a whole nother story. It's a good one and maybe I'll tell it at some point. But there is a firearm involved, and I'm assuming that YouTube will probably ding me for talking about a firearm. I don't really know, even though I just did kind of talk about firearms, but um, it was a good one. And uh, my old Padre, turns out, was packing. Mom and I didn't know, but uh, I'll tell that at a later date. Maybe I'll even make a film about it. So here we are, somewhere up in the Carson, Carson National Forest, and... Uh, yeah, just did about a 40 or 50 mile ride up here through Tasuki and up to uh, Chimayo. And now we are in the pines, which is another reason why I live in New Mexico. 
By the way, for those of you who watch these visual diaries and think, wow, Milner's out just out and about in the world all the time, just doing fun stuff, riding his motorcycle, riding his bike, uh, making pictures of random things, the reality is this is where I spend most of my time when I'm at home. Yes, I'm right here. Yes, I have my, my buff on and my hat and my sun sleeves because I'm thinking positively that I might actually get out there at some point later today, even though it's supposed to rain today, which is pretty amazing. This is where I spend the bulk of my time. I've got my trusty blurb laptop, one keyboard, two keyboards, my one monitor here. I've got a second monitor here. I've got my trash can Mac here, which is an ancient, at least 10 year old trash can Mac that I got from blurb, which I never use because it's so slow. But I do have it connected to a four bay, 40 terabyte SATA drive system. So when I come in with external drives of one sort or another, they get backed up onto the SATA drive, but nothing, nothing sexy and exotic outside of my Albania journal. But this is where I spend the vast majority of my time here. And I'll give you a little, a little sneak peek as to what's in the other direction. This is, uh, that's the view I have. Nothing, nothing super exotic, nothing super tidy. The thing is, this is not, this is not a movie set. This is not a prop office for, not a prop office for YouTube. I don't do that. This is my actual office, working office. So what you see, what you, what you can't see here right off screen are the books I'm using for my current project. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight books. I've got hard drives. I've got artwork. I've got some AG23 copies. I've got some stuff that's going to end up in my journal. And uh, books from that people have sent me, friends, family, no family. My family doesn't care about books. Project books, art supplies, stamps, journals, paints, all that kind of stuff. So this is where I am like 80% of the time, locked in here doing one thing or another, one blurb thing or another or one blurb slash Milner thing or another. So don't go thinking, don't go changing, don't go thinking I'm outside all the time.